Hello, my name is Keshwani. It's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. I am here because I want to improve my English. Hopefully, that is the case with you. So let's work together, you and I, and help each other in improving our English. We will learn few words every day, and in the process, our vocabulary will, will improve, will expand. The very first word that I want to talk about today is actually the word that I already dealt with yesterday on day six. But unfortunately, I did not do a very good job on it. So I'm going to redo it. The word is divine. It's a very simple word and you might wonder how in the world could he possibly not have done a decent job on it. But I did not. I left something out. So I want to, I want to go back and cover it properly. Divine actually has two meanings. It has two meanings. See, that's why I raised the adjective just now. It has two meanings depending on which part of speech you're using it as. It has one meaning as an adjective and it has another meaning as a verb. And I left out the second part, so that's why I want to redo it. So let's first talk about what it means as an adjective. Look, listen. As an adjective, it means having to do with God or Goddess, which we already talked about yesterday, having to do with God or Goddess. I think I'm going to retire this marker. This marker is no good. There, it's gone. So I do not end up, so I do not keep picking it up all the time. It also means it also means, in a colloquial way, in a colloquial terms, so extremely good. How do you spell extremely? I don't think there is any E after the R. Extremely good or perfect. But this meaning that you see here, the second meaning that I put here, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, that meaning is a, it applies only if you're using this word in a colloquial sense. And if you do not know what colloquial means, go back and uh, 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 look it up. This is also something that we covered yesterday on day five. On day five, we talked about this word colloquial. Uh, watch the video for, for day 5, uh, day before yesterday as a matter of fact, today is day 7. So day before yesterday, just type in this tag, Keshwani prep, one word, Keshwani prep, dash, vocab, dash, day, and then the number, day 5. Watch that video and you will learn the word colloquial. Colloquial simply means informal speech, a uh, kind of speech that you will hear sometimes teenager employ in their conversation. It is not the colloquial speech, a colloquial uh, meanings or the words are not something that you would expect to see normally in a formal formal reading or a formal writing or formal speech so if somebody defines something as uh, if somebody defines something as divine then what they're saying is that extremely good it is perfect it's the perfect example of something it's an informal definition the word also has other meaning if you were to use it as a verb as a verb divine means to Foretell. To foretell. To predict. To prophecy. Or simply to to guess. Bevine is the word. Uh, 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 in French, which means to make a guess. That's all. I left out this part. Yesterday I left out this uh, informal meaning of the word and I also left out the meaning of the word as a verb. I only talked about the adjective. That's it. Now it's out of my system. I feel much better. 
Let's talk about the word that I, want, that I have uh, on the agenda for today. Okay. I need to raise everything. Let's see if I can find something better to raise here. Not sure if it's something better, but it's most certainly something different. And so is this one. All right. So today we're going to start our day seven with the word that I have here and the word is lucid Lu. it is an adjective I always want to make sure that I know how to pronounce it you want to do your best to pronounce the word as properly as you as you can which is why it's important that you put down you put down the pronunciation next to each word. What does it mean, lucid? Lucid means freely flowing. It also means easy to understand. A, 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 a lucid argument is the one that is easy to understand. Something that is easy to understand, something that is a, a, a lucid argument is something. A lucid argument is something. Lucid argument. Is one. That is not convoluted. Let's learn that word, convoluted. Con convoluted which means twisted tangled complicated and finally intricate if your argument is convoluted it's twisted it's uh, it's a uh, Tangled, it's complicated, it's, 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 it's not straightforward, it's not, it's not clear, it's not lucid, it's not freely flowing. People have difficulty following what you're saying. On the other hand, if whatever it is that you're arguing is easy to understand, then that argument is said to be a lucid argument. A lucid argument, however, again, I need the room here, so I need to raise everything, but I'm going to first make a note here. A lucid argument... is not necessarily a cogent one. Just because whatever this person is describing is lucid does not necessarily mean that it is cogent. What does what cogent mean? Let's learn it. I need the room, so I need to raise the top part. Oh boy, I have a tremendous difficulty raising this. Cogent is the word. Very simple, co cogent, which simply means convincing or persuasive.
Just because the argument is easy to follow, just because the argument is easy to understand, whatever the person is arguing, does not mean that that person has succeeded in convincing you of his or her point. I may understand it, but I'm still not convinced. I have no difficulty what you're trying to argue, but I'm not convinced. I do not buy it. On the other hand, if your argument is convincing, it is persuasive, a persuasive argument or a convincing argument is said to be a lucid argument. A persuasive argument or convincing argument is said to have the noun. I'm going to erase this bottom part here again because I need more room. It's getting too crowded. Noun of cogent is cogency. Co -gen you might think that this is a simple pronunciation. Why do I bother writing every single pronunciation? That's just my habit. That's just what I do. So if an argument is convincing, an argument is persuasive, that argument is said to have cogency. If a person is being cogent, he or she is said to have cogency. Cogency is the noun, just like a clever person, a clever person, which is an adjective, a clever person is said to have cleverness, that's your noun. Similarly, a brave person is said to have bravery. Similarly, a cogent person, a convincing person, a persuasive person, or persuasive argument for that matter, is said to have cogency. Sometimes the nouns are a little bit different. And it takes, uh, it takes a little work to make sure that you understand the proper noun that goes with the proper adjective. Do you understand? We cannot insert any S at the end uh, on every single adjective and hope that it that will do the job. <coughs> that will do the job. Clever, of course, becomes cleverness, but the brave would not become, become brave, braveness or cogentness. It doesn't work that way. The noun of cogent is cogency. Let's go on then. Let's learn something new. I need to, again, I need to read everything. So the word here was cogency, right there. Let's talk about something else. Do you know? Do you know what is a a mood point? If you're talking to somebody and says oh, that's a mood point, what does it mean by that? A mood point. A mood point. Is something that is being discussed. Purely for theoretical, purely for theoretical reasons. It has it has no practical implication. We discuss something, a mood point is something uh, described, uh, something that, that is described as a mood point is something that has no practical relevance, it has no bearing on, on the reality as they exist. 
uh, there is no point discussing what they try what the, when, when the person says it's, it's a moot point what they're trying to tell you is that why are we bothering why are we bothering to discuss it it has no practical implication it doesn't matter it is immaterial but if you discuss it anyway then we are discussing purely for the theoretical purpose it has no practical implication whatsoever a moot point is just such a point for example let me think if I can think of some I'm going to give you some absurd example just to drive the point home. Two people are, are talking to each other, the two managers, and they say, well, uh, one, one guy is uh, talking to another one and says, look, Michael has been late to work every day this week. Every day he's been late. Our policy is that if the person is late for three days in a row in a week, we fire that person. And he's asking the other person, should I fire Michael? He's, this, he's been late every day this week. This is, this is his third day he's been late this week. And the, second, and, that's, uh, and the first person informs him, oh, Michael, by the way, died this morning on his way to work here. He died half an hour ago. And the person still goes on saying, so should I, put, uh, should I fire him or not? Well, it doesn't matter. Once he informs that the guy is dead as a dodo, this carrying on the discussion of whether or not we should fire that person is a moot point. It doesn't matter. It has no relevance. So you can discuss this all you want, but that discussion is only going to be for theoretical purposes. Because that is their policy, to fire the person after they are uh, absent for the third time. So they're going to follow their policy. But that's, that's theoretical. It has no practical implication. The guy is dead. Do you understand? I know it's a very absurd example, but at least you will, hopefully you will remember it. Let's go on then. Next word. Next word actually is a very simple word. I do not know why I had this urge to, to talk about it, but here, here it is. Question is, what is a, a deed? A deed, very simple pronunciation, is a noun of course. It's an act. Uh, it's an act or an action. When it speaks of good deed, you must have heard of good deed. An example would be good deed. A good deed is something that you do uh, to help out somebody else. That's all. I know, that's all it was. As I said, sometimes I do not know why I have these urges to cover things which uh, I know most people would know. But I'm just going through every single word that I always wanted to make a formal list of so that, you see, as I, I'm going to break into my sermon one more time. As I told you before in my previous videos, if you watch them, I think it was the very first or second video that I made, uh, first or second day, what I made is that uh, the vocabulary, vocabulary has... Uh, has three levels. Any person's vocabulary has there are three levels to it. First level is where a person uh, thinks that they know the meaning of the word, but when you ask them what does it mean, they can't really describe it. They cannot articulate it. They will say, "Oh, well, I can't really explain it. It's too complicated." But that's their way of saying, "I really don't know what the word means." The word is not totally alien to them. It's not that they have never seen the word. There are some words that are completely alien to me. I've never seen them before in my life. They appear for the very first time. Uh, uh, the, I'm not talking about that situation, I'm talking about a word that you may have seen many, many times, but you just never bothered to learn. That's the first level of vocabulary. The second level of vocabulary is where you've seen the word, you know the word, you know exactly what it means, and if somebody were to ask you what it means, I can tell them what it means. I can articulate it, I can explain it, what the word deed means. That's the second level. The third level of the vocabulary is where that word becomes so ingrained in your memory that it becomes part of your working vocabulary. You start using it in your speech, you start using it in your writing, and that is when you know that you have mastered the word. That's where I want to be. I want to graduate this word from my second level of vocabulary to my working vocabulary, which is why I covered it. Do you understand? And hopefully that is exactly what is going on with you. There are many words that I'm going to cover that you know already probably. Kind of know it, sort of know it, or maybe know it really well. It doesn't matter. Question is, are you able to use them in your daily speech or in your writing without hesitation? And that is the question. Do you understand? Let's go on then. 
Next, I want to talk about a pair of words. Not just one word, but a pair. The words are Well, this is not going to do a job. This is you can't read this at all. Don't worry if I disappear from the camera. Don't be alarmed. I'll be right back. The words are wise and virtue. They usually come in pair. Well, I shouldn't really say they usually come in pair, but you should know both of them because they are antonym of each other. They are opposite of each other. Let's first start with virtue. This is pronounced chu. T U E is pronounced chu. Ver. Virtue. What's a virtue? A virtue is a good quality. Is a good quality. For example, honesty is a virtue. So is bravery. So is compassion. So is charity. Those are all virtues. Wise is the antonym. Opposite of virtue is wise. Wise. And of course, if this is a good quality, this of course would have to be a bad quality. Or if you like, an immoral quality. An immoral quality. Vice and virtue. Sometimes uh, you do something which is a virtue, but if you do not, if you do it excessively, then it becomes vice. Anything in moderation is good. Moderation is the key word here. If you do it too much of it, sometimes the same virtue, the same good quality becomes, tends to be turned into a vice. But anyway, that's a different story altogether for another day. But that's it, I'm done for today. Vice and virtue. So we did uh, lucid. We understood, we learned the meaning of the word convoluted. We talked about cogent argument, cogency. Then we talk about what is the meaning of, meaning of a mood point. A mood point is, one more time, is simply discussed purely for the sake of discussion. It has no practical importance whatsoever. It has no practical implication whatsoever. That is what is known as a mood point. Uh, uh, we talked about deed, which was a very simple word, and finally, virtue and vice. I hope you had fun. You should have fun. Don't look at this as a chore. Do not look at this as a work. Uh, just learn few words every day, and that's how you expand your vocabulary. And like I said, don't turn it into a chore. Don't just say, well, I'm going to do so many words, 10 words a day, and so forth. There's no point in saying that thing unless you're going to actually follow through that regiment. Here's a good word, regiment. We'll learn it next time. Now when I say next time, I'm just uh, using this uh, term in a, in, a, in a generic sense. Next time simply means sometimes in the future, for me. Well, I hope uh, I put them in the side because so to remind myself that I, have, I want to cover these words in the future. So that's what I do there. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found it uh, useful, the information. If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, I tutor over the internet via Skype. I also do tutoring face to face, obviously, and of course also I uh, do tutoring on the telephone over the telephone service. Uh, it does work. If you're preparing for any of this exam, GRE, GMAT, SAT, or TOEFL, send me an email from any of these uh, website addresses that you see there, or you can go to kashwaniprep.com and send me an email, and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Okay, thanks.